All right, so I'm gonna go through the coding by hand a little bit differently this time. Um, we're gonna do it in a video. So, uh, go ahead, do all of the coding by hand first, um, and then come back to this video, and let's go over it together. But you should try it on your own, definitely at first, and then we'll kind of talk about it and see what happens. When I do coding by hand in class, it's intentionally designed uh, to be something where it's a conversation. So this is gonna be a very interesting video, um, but I'm gonna do the best I can to just kind of explain stuff and talk about it as we go. It probably will be a long video, uh, so bear with me. There'll be a lot of good nuggets um, throughout um, as we go. All right, so the A is less than B is going to be equivalent to zero less than one, and b less than a is going to be equivalent to one is less than zero. Uh, so zero is less than one is a true statement, one is less than zero is a false statement, so then I gotta do true or false, and true or false is going to be true. Uh, remember, only one of them needs to be true in order for the other one to be uh, for the whole thing to be true in an OR statement. Uh, just also, this is a great example of short circuit evaluation. Um, when Java runs some code like this for whatever reason, um, it's not even going to look at this. So if for some reason the second half is an error, it's not even going to run it and compile it to check it if it's an error or not. So um, just so you know, it's going to say that this is true. It's going to see that the first half is true. It's going to see that it's an OR statement, and it's going to be like, I don't even care what comes after that, because true or anything, true or false, is always true. All right, question number two. So we're going to have 0 less than negative 10, and then we're going to have B, uh, sorry, I'll replace B, 1 equals equals 2. Uh, zero less than negative one is going to, I'm sorry, less than negative 10 is going to evaluate to false. And zero is not smaller than a negative number. And one equals two is also going to evaluate to false. So therefore, false or false is going to evaluate to false. Uh, zero equals equals zero. Uh, once again, so Java is going to run this code. It's going to do it. It's going to say that, yep. This is true, it's a true or, and that's gonna be a true statement. It's not even going to look at the second half of that. All right, number four, A equals equals B, so that's gonna say zero equals equals one, which is a false statement, but then not false, or what's the opposite of false? That's gonna be true. A not equal to B is going to evaluate as 0 not equal to 1, which is a true statement. All right, this next one, it's going to say 0 equals equals 0. We get our first and, one equals, equals two. All right, so the first part, zero equals zero, is going to evaluate to true. Our second part, one equals equals two, is going to evaluate to false. So because this is an and statement, all of this is going to evaluate to false. Uh, because true and false is going to be False. In order for it to be true, they both have to be true. Um, and then the very last thing I have to do is I have to not that, and not false would then make my answer true. Uh, notice we can demorgan this one, and we're going to get the same exact answer. So let me demorgan it real quick. Um, and that's if I distribute basically to that, to that, and to that. Um, so what's going to happen is it's going to turn this first part into what is the opposite of equals, 
would be not equals. So zero is not equal to zero. And then it changes the and to an or statement. And then once again, it changes the equals to not equals. One not equal to two. So when I do De Morgan's, it, it kind of distributes there and changes everything. So it changes equal to what's the opposite of equal, not equal. It changes and to the opposite of and, which is or. And it changes equals to the opposite of equals, which is not equals. So zero is not equal to zero. That's false. One is not equal to two is true. This is an or statement. False or true is true. So you could demorgan this one, or you could just go through the process, and either way you get the answer as true. All right, number seven. Zero equals equals zero. Uh, once again, that's going to say true, um, and that's just going to move on because of short circuit evaluation. It's not even going to look at that second part. Um, and then we are going to do another demorgan here, um, or just do it normally. So zero is equal to zero is going to be a true statement. Uh, B is equal to two is going to be a false statement. Okay. But then not false is going to turn into true. So then we're going to end up having true and true, which is true. And then we'll have not true, which will then become false. All right. So I'm going to move on, just erase that, move on to this next part. Uh, same steps here to do that. I'm going to move just a little bit faster on these and actually probably skip through these a little bit more. Uh, so remember here, X and Z are going to be true. And then Y is going to be false. So if we have true and false, this is going to evaluate as false. Okay. And then if we have true and true, this is going to evaluate as true. False or true is true. All right, so for this one, X is true. So right away, this is going to evaluate as true. And then we have not x, uh, which is false, or true. So this one's going to evaluate as true. True and true is true. All right, so then we're going to have x or y. Um, x is true, so that's going to make this true. And then we have not true, which will then become false. Uh, this is another, this is the other example of short circuit evaluation. If we have an and statement and the first thing is false, we're not even going to look at that second half of it. We're just automatically going to say it's false because for it to be true, both of them have to be true. If the first one's not true, then obviously the whole thing's not going to be true, so it doesn't even matter. All right, so for this one, uh, remember when we have order of operations, we're just going to move left to right. So Java is going to read this as not Z, which will be false. And then it's going to look at false or false. So right away, this is going to become false. And then it's going to do false and Z, which is also going to be false. So up to here we have false. Now we're gonna I'll change color here. So now we've got false or y and x. So false or y is going to become false. And then we've got false and x, which will then become false as well. So through that, we're just going to move left to right, doing every step of the problem, and it just becomes false. All right, which operation is performed first in the following expression, um, A, B, C, or D here? Remember, we work left to right, but we have to do order of operations. We have to observe order of operations. So it is going to be 
C. So it's what we have in parentheses here is gonna be the first thing, um, and then we can work outside of that and do the rest of the items. Um, and actually, just to kind of go through it, so we'd have C be first, B would be second, D would be third, and then A would be fourth. All right, so here, write a Java statement that assigns false or true to the Boolean value uh, variable, uh, candidate. And then if SAT score is greater than 1100 and GPA is not less than 2.5 and age is not equal to 15 or 16. So go ahead and write that statement um, or pause the video. Uh, when you resume, you will just see it there. All right, so here we're just going to change English into Java. So candidate, if SAT score is greater than 1100, so SAT score greater than 1100, and GPA is not less than 2.5, so GPA is less than 2.5, not, and age is not equal to 15 or 16. So not age equals 15 or age equals 16, and we got the parentheses to not that. That would be the correct answer word for word, um, but notice you could do some De Morgans in there if you wanted to as well, um, if needed. All right, so for these, you're just writing what it's gonna print, um, and then if it does air, go ahead and write air. All right, and this is obviously working with if statements. So, uh, for this first one, x equals 80, okay, then we have a statement, if x equals, I'm sorry, if x is greater than 70, and note the semicolon here, so this is actually just going to end the if statement. So if statement's done, and then we're gonna print out hi, and we're gonna print out hello. So it doesn't matter if x is actually greater than 70 or not, it's still gonna print that. Notice here, x equals 60, and the same thing. We have the semicolon right after the if statement, so that if statement's actually going to finish. So then this is going to print, hi, hello. Uh, once again, it doesn't matter if that, um, if x is greater than 70 or, or not. In this case, it's not. It's still gonna print those two items. All right, now in part three, we have x equals 80. If x is greater than 70, then system.out.print high. 80 is greater than 70. Notice there's no semicolon there, so this is going to print high. Okay. Then we have an else statement, and it's going to say else, but with that semicolon, that else statement just ends immediately. So then we have new lines of code where it's going to print hello and hey every single time. So notice a good way to do this would be to put a bracket here. We want to indent that line, and then we want to put another bracket afterwards. Um, so these are not written the most syn syntax correct ways, um, but this is really testing whether you know how if and else statements work or not. All right, number four. So here we have our x equals 60. Um, if x is greater than 70, we're gonna print high. Well, x is not. Um, so it's not going to print high. Our else statement just ends, and then it prints hello and hey. All right, and this last one. Um, just a quick note, though. If the, well, let's, yeah, go to number five. So if x equals 60, um, we got that semicolon on the if statement. We have hi. We have else, and then we have hello and hey. Uh, this one's actually going to error. Um, because our if statement ends right here, we can't have an else statement not attached to it. Um, and because that if statement finishes here, we have a new line of code and then an else statement, but that else is not connected to the if because of that line of code that's in between. Going back real quick, 
um, if this was written correctly um, and this semicolon was gone, then note that hello would not print because we'd either do the if or we do the else. We wouldn't typically do both of those. All right, so we have some more here. Uh, what is, is it going to print? Uh, go ahead and write it. And obviously, if it is going to air, go ahead and write air as well. Um, go ahead, pause the video. I'm actually going to write all the answers here, and then you can come back and take a look at it after you complete it on your own. All right, so looking at number one, so we have some number equals 100. If some number is greater than 50, 100 is greater than 50, so it's going to print out first. Um, notice because there are no brackets here that we are only running the first line of this if statement, and then these two are no longer part of the if statement, so it's going to print second and third for sure. Um, so for example, number two, we now have 40 is greater than 50, uh, which is a false statement, so it's not going to print this line of code. Uh, but once again, with no brackets, it's still going to print those. It doesn't matter where it's indented to. So number three, someone, some number equals 100. So if some number is greater than 50, okay, we currently have brackets now. So both of those lines of code are going to run. First, second, since 100 is greater than 50. And then at the end, we'll write uh, third. Notice if this word said else here, we would not print third, uh, but that word obviously isn't there, so we would. Same thing for number four. Because this isn't an if statement, we will not print these two lines of code. Number five, uh, we bring in that if sta or the else statement here. So if some number is greater than 100, uh, equals 100, then 100 is greater than 50. Perfect. We run this line of code. Else, okay, well, it is, so we're not going to run this line of code. And once again, because there's not brackets around it, this one is actually should be moved over here, and that's going to run every single time. And you notice now with when it's not greater than 50, it's not going to print this line of code, but it will print our else statement, and then it will print this line of code as well, because that will print both times. All right, and I'm not going to go through number seven, but that one is true. All right, and a couple of good pieces of information here. If the body of the if contains only a single statement, then our brace is required, or brackets required, um, and this is no. Okay. Uh, it's very, very, very bad habit to not use brackets or braces when you're using if statements. Um, very rarely when you write lines of code are you ever going to have just one statement in an if statement. Um, and even if you do, there's no saying that you're not going to come back later and add more to it. Um, so typically, every time you use an if and an else, you're always going to use the brackets there. Uh, number two is the expression x is greater than 10 not equal, equivalent to the expression x is less than 10. Um, and this is also going to be a no. And this is definitely a common issue um, when you do... When you see greater than, and you say, oh, not greater than means less than. Um, but it actually means x is less than or equal to 10 um, would be the opposite. Because think of a number, um, x is greater than 10, right? And if we think of 12, well, x is greater than 12, that's true. Not true is false, okay? So that would become false. But then we look at this part with 12. 12 is less than 10. That's false. Oh, that matches up cool. Those maybe are the same. And then we try something less than, right? Let's take zero. Zero is greater than 10 is false. Not false is true. And then here I look at zero is less than 10. That's true. Well, those matched up. So we look like we're doing okay. But then if I use the example of 10 is where things break down. 10 is greater than 10. That's false. Not false is going to be true. And this part would become true. But then when I do 10 is less than 10, we get a false statement there, because 10 is not less than 10. So to see that those two things are different means that those are not equivalent. Okay? But if we do x is less than or equal to 10, then we'd say x is less than or equal to 10. Oh, now this is going to be a true statement, and now they are equivalent because we got true and true. All right, so write a single 
uh, Java if else statement that outputs the value of a character variable grade um, if grade is equal to A, B, C, D, or F. Otherwise, output the message input error. All right, so once again, go ahead and pause the video uh, and see how it goes. And when you come back, you will see the answer. All right, so this is a lot of work here, um, but this is actually the way it has to go. Um, so if grade equals equals uh, A, notice A is a char, um, so equals equals is okay. You uh, use dot equals when you're working with strings, but because this is a char, we're good to go here. Um, and you have to say grade equals equals A, or grade equals equals B, or grade equals equals. You can't just say grade equals equals A, or B, or C, or D. Uh, for whatever reason, Java's not coded like that, and it will not work, it will not compile, you will get an error with that, um, saying an inklogical statement. So, you do have to write it out this entire way. Um, notice we have our parentheses here, and then we have our uh, semicolon, there's not, go I'm sorry, we have our bracket. Uh, there is no semicolon, is what I meant to say, when we do an if statement. Uh, then when we say that, well, what do we want to happen if that's true? Well, we want to print out grade. Uh, once again, s.o.p is my shorthand for system.out.println. Um, obviously, this would not compile if you do s.o.p. Um, you have to write it all out if you're actually trying to compile it. Um, if you're doing any coding by hand, I'm fine with that. Uh, but just know on the ACT, um, on the AP exam, they will not accept that. So make sure you write it out for that. Um, and any type of actual coding assignment that you turn in for me, like the coding assessment. All right, so we want to print out grade, um, semicolon, ends that line, and then bracket is going to end that if statement. Um, and then because we do have an else component to this, we want to write else right after the bracket, um, and then we can write another bracket to include everything I want to happen if it is not this, um, which in this case it would be to print out input error bracket. Uh, the next one is going to be almost identical to it, um, but notice we're going to have to actually demorgan it. So we're going to say, um, instead of grade equals equals A, we're going to say uh, grade not equal to A. In this case, we're going to be doing and symbols the entire way, right? So if grade is not equal to A, and not B, and not C, and not D, and not F, um, then we're going to print out input error, else we'll print out grade. Um, so notice there's going to be some slight changes there to it. It's just basically backwards. All right, and now we get to truth tables. Uh, so for these, you're going to want to go through them and kind of just do whatever is necessary to get them done. So in this case, we have our A and our B. Um, if we do not A, then that's obviously going to be the opposite of whatever is in this column. So for this, it'll be false. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Uh, false, false, true, true. For A or B, I'm sorry, A or not B, means we're going to take this column and we're going to take the not B column. So in fact, what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to do a mini not B column and I'm going to reverse everything there. So false, true, false, true. So now when I do A or not B, I'm comparing this column and I'm comparing this column. So remember with an or statement, as long as one is true, then they're both true. So for you here, I see true or false, that will be true. I see true or, and according to short circuit, I'm not even going to look at the second half. Okay, here I see false, which means I do have to look at the second half. False, false or false is going to be false. Here we got false, but here we got true. So then this is going to be true since the second part was true. All right, and for this last one, I'm gonna do the, the same thing. I'm gonna break this one down into lots of different parts here. So if I extend my table here, I'm gonna first look at um, not, I'm gonna look at B or not A. Um, and if you struggle with truth tables, I highly rec recommend that you write it out. So B or not A. 
And that's what I'm going to do first. So because I'm doing that, I am comparing uh, this column. So B or not A, and I'm comparing that column. Um, I already have those both done, so I can kind of do this in one step here. So true or false is going to be true. False or false is going to be false. True or true is true. And false or true is also going to be true. All right, so now for this, I have to compare. And actually, I don't even need the second part, so that's cool. I'm going to compare this with A to give me this, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm comparing A and this B or not A, which I already figured out. So when I look at this, I'm gonna look at true and true, and that's gonna leave me with an answer of true. And then compare true with false, and that's gonna be a false statement. Uh, remember, with an and, they both have to be true. Um, and then I'm going to compare false uh, by short circuit evaluation. If I do false and, then that's actually all I'm going to do, and I already know that's false. And same thing for the last row, that's going to be false, um, since that first column is false. All right. Truth tables are tricky, but if you break it up and you do and you make kind of your own roll, rows or columns with each step, like I did there, you're usually gonna be a little bit more successful. All right, question number two, simplify the expression A and B, but we want the not version of that. Uh, so we are going to uh, De Morgan this, and it means what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the opposite of all three things. So the opposite of A is not A, the opposite of and is or, and the opposite of B is not B. All right, so same thing on this next one. We want to De Morgan all three things. So the opposite of A is not A. The opposite of or is going to be an and. And the opposite of not B is obviously not not B, but we would just write that as All right, and this last one, just got to do it in order. Um, so I'm going to De Morgan this, which means I'm going to do not B. And then the opposite of an or is going to be an and. And then the opposite of that whole mess is actually just going to be not A and not B. So notice I didn't touch anything in that parenthesis. I just put the not symbol in front of it because what we got to do now is another step of De Morgan's. So I'm just going to carry this all over, not B, and and now we can do that last step of De Morgan's. So the opposite of A is not A. The opposite of an and is going to be an or, and the opposite of a negative is going to be just a positive there. So this is going to be my answer for this one. Not B and not A or B. All right, write a Java Boolean expression for each of the following. So if X is equal to 56. So if X, and if we want to do equal, we do two equal signs there, 56. And here, when we do this one, we're going to say if letter equals equals G. And because G is a char, we're going to put it in the single quotes. Okay, on this one, go ahead and pause the video. See if you can write this code. Um, when you come back up, you'll see the whole code, and then we will talk about it. All right, so we have if and then value greater than or equal to 23 and value less than or equal to 78. Um, notice when it says inclusive, we want to include the numbers 23 and 78, which is going to tell us that we want greater than or equal to less than or equal to 78 there. 
Um, notice that you could say greater than 22, less than 79, but that gets a little bit confusing, so I wouldn't recommend it. Um, also notice here that I put brackets that are not required because we only have this one statement here. But once again, best coding practice would tell you to include the brackets here. Uh, it's also very important that you have and versus or. And that you're using value as part of both of them. Um, that you need the word here twice. Uh, just a real quick kind of comment. This code right here is going to be super important on your assignment three, uh, your crack the code that you have. So if you haven't done that yet, uh, just know that you're probably going to be doing some things that look like this. All right, this video is getting a little bit long, so I'm actually just going to stop it and we'll do another video for the next one.